section is called 5.1 estimate of finite sums. So what we're trying to do now is finding the area under the curve. Starting from chapter 5 on, we're going to find the area. Okay. So given this picture right here, we're given a curve right here, and we're trying to find is the area under this curve right here. The only thing is when we started this way back in the beginning primitive time, they only knew such um, formula as like let's say a rectangular, the square, the circle, things like you learn in geometry and algebra one, things like that. So what they thought was the best shape to find the area under the curve is going to be a rectangular shape. So they used a rectangular shape for this. So what you basically do is base times height to figure that and then do each one of those right there. Now this is called the LRAM, which is the short method of left hand rectangular approximation method. So that means that you start from the left side right here, you find the area of every single one of those rectangular parts right there, except for this last part, you do not include this last part right there. Okay? Then we do the right hand Riemann sum. So this is then uh, going the opposite direction. We start from the right hand, you find the base times high, base times high, you include every single one of those except for this last little box right there. Okay? So each one of those is going to be finding the area. Now, if I had to choose between the RAM and the LRAM, RAM will probably be the best choice just because this big box right here is included, whereas the LRAM did not include this, it was more concerned of the little box right there. Whereas the RAM was including this, but it did not include is this little box right there. Okay? So if you had to choose between those two methods, it's going to be then RAM is going to be the best method. Now between those two methods right here, this is not the best method because if you look at it carefully, <clears throat> the area under the curve, each of these little almost triangle shape right there is not included in the calculations for the area and this huge chunk right there as well. So this is why it's called approximation because we're not including some of these things right here. Okay? So if you had to choose between that and a different method, try the other method probably because this is not the best method since you're excluding some of the area underneath the curve. All right, now, how do we do the calculations? So the calculations sometimes or most of the time will come out to a table form like this or it will be drawn as the picture of the curve. So if it's given to you in a table format, what it looks like is something like this, and they'll give us T and Y, so usually T is the time right there, and then the Y is going to be the distance up here. So if given something like this, if I have given one, one right there, we're saying it's the height of two, so approximately like the height of two right there. If this is three, then the height of it is four. So three right there, height of it is four, etc. right? So if it's five, the height of it is eight, so here we have is 5, the height of it is 8 right there, okay? So when you calculate the LRAM, you start from the left side and then you work your way over. So just because you're doing base times height, that's what we're going to include right here, is the 2 represents this right here, is the base right there, because it's the distance of 1 and 3 is 2 right there, so that's 2 right there, and then the height of it is going to be 2, because that's what they're saying the height of this is 2. So then the next one, <clears throat> two times because that's the base again. So between three to five, the base is two. So that's two right there. And the height of it is four right there. Okay? So that's how we get the four. And then same thing. We get the next two right there. Between five and seven is two. Right? Five and seven is two. But then the height of it is eight right there. So that's how we include the eight right there. Okay? So if you look at the table right here, what it basically does is it takes the distance between those right here as your base right here times it by the height right there. Base right there times it by the height, okay? And so diagonally, you can see that's what basically it's going to do for each one of these numbers right here. And then once you get this, then you go, go ahead and put it in the calculation and you get 108. So we're saying the area underneath this curve right here is approximation of area of 108 right there, okay? Then we go the other direction. So we do the right hand sum, uh, the Riemann sum, or the RAM. <clears throat> so right hand means then you do the opposite. Now you have to start from the bottom right here. Because the base of this is 2 and the height of it is 17, that's what we're going to start with. Base of 2, 17. So let me just show you visually again. So between then 11 and, uh, I'm sorry, 13 and 11, that's a base of 2, but the height of this, right, is going to be the 17. So that's how we got the 17 right here. Okay, so then same thing, we would do the opposite direction, so the base of this is right here is 2, we go the multiplication of 15 right there, that's how we get this right here, 
The base of this right here is 2. The height of it is 13. That's how we got this part right here, etc. So then we go all the way to the end, except, again, we don't include the 2. So I, did I point that out with this one right here? So we do all of this except for we don't include is the 17 on this one because, again, the calculation of all this height but the 17. So RM is going the opposite direction. We start from the 17 but not include the 2 right there. So that's what we did with this one right here. Okay, so then when we do the calculation, it comes to 134. Notice the difference between this right here. This is 134, this is 108 right there. It is a difference and a huge difference as far as the area approximation right there. Okay, so, and also algebraically, can you see that if the base right here is all 2 right there, if all the bases are 2, you can actually factor out a 2 right there, and then you can actually include is the height. So you would then do is 2 plus 4 plus 8 plus 10, plus 13, uh, plus 15, right, 15, and then you add them all up right there, and then that still gives us 108. So, so that's another way, method as well, because that's the algebraically, you're just basically factoring out the 2 right there, that's this 2, which is the base, because this should be consistent. If the base is not consistent, then you have a problem, then you actually have to calculate each one of them out. But in this case, the base is consistently 2, so we can say base is out here, and each of these are the heights, and then you just put this in the calculator, okay? So that's the method that we're going to use for this 5.1.